as I'm sure you guys are well aware by now, I am indeed running a Hackintosh. You can see it right behind me. I've been running it since October of 2010. I got all the parts for a graduation slash birthday present, threw everything together, and I've been running a very nice and very stable system for well over a year now. I, I'm indeed running Lion, the latest version, 10.7.2, and so I know there's a lot of people on the fence about doing this. I have many various Hackintosh tutorials on my YouTube channel. You can go ahead and just browse my channel for those. There's tutorials. About uh, a year ago in February, I made a video, Is a Hackintosh Really Worth It? And um, I'm going to sort of bring up a lot of that stuff. But this is going to be a new video series. Right now, I'm looking at about seven parts. But I'll probably add more as needed. But it's called Hackintosh from Start to Finish. In this video, I'm going to take you guys through just the very beginning stages where it's all up here. You're not actually working with any yet, anything yet, you know, any hardware or software. It's really just going to be, you know, what's this all about? What can I do? Is it a viable solution to my problems? Do, um, is it a stable system? Will I, is it something that I could really use on a day-to-day -day basis? Those uh, sorts of questions that I know you people on the fence have. And um, once we start getting to the actual uh, installing the OS, um, I hope this guy, this will just help you with all that stuff. So when looking at a Mac and a PC, you know, there's a few things you have to keep in mind. When you buy a Mac, you know, yes, it has a higher price tag, but the old, the age old saying you get what you pay for definitely applies here. Because when you buy a Mac, Apple really focuses on two things. That's stability and ease of use. When you buy a Mac, you plug it in the wall with like the one cable. You hit the power button and you know that it's going to boot perfectly pretty much every time, you know, unless like a hard drive dies or something. But uh, you can just hit the power button and it'll work. You can update with one click and it will work next time you boot up. That's just the sort of thing you pay for when you get a Mac. When you get a Hackintosh, yes, you are running Mac OS X, but it's not that simple. So the key selling points of Macs, at least in my opinion, are, like I said, stability and ease of use. When you get a Hackintosh, you're sort of throwing those out the window. Not so much stability, but the ease of use part. To build a system from scratch, number one, you have to build the computer, number one. Number two, you have to support it, and you have to sort of know what you're doing. So the whole ease of use factor is completely gone, unless you have some pretty decent, um, I guess, computer skills. I don't mean to sound like Napoleon Dynamite there, but um, you really have to know what you're doing. So it kind of takes the ease of use and throws it out the window. Like I said, not so much this the stability, because I am running a very stable system. Like I said, I've been running this since October. Um, back on Snow Leopard, I did have more problems, but since I've updated the line where they have updated uh, support for the Intel i7, i5, chip stuff like that line has been running flawless I've I don't think I've gotten a kernel panic yet on this so what I'm trying to say is pretty simple if you just want to hit a power button after an update and know that it's gonna boot then don't do this because you will be very disappointed a lot of times after you update uh, you have to reinstall kext uh, just getting the OS to install for the first time it's a pretty lengthy process. It's not like Apple where you can just throw in a, a Lion thumb drive you buy from Apple or a Snow Leopard DVD, reboot the system and have it be perfectly installed, then just update to Lion. There's many steps in between that for a Hackintosh, and if you don't really know what you're doing or if you just don't want to do that, then buy a real Mac. Don't do the Hackintosh scene. Don't really get into it because it won't be for you. If you want to just have a computer that works without having to hassle with anything, then buy a Mac because they are worth the price tag. So getting into the reason I built my Hackintosh, uh, the first one is that I'm a poor college kid, you know. I, I really didn't want a system like the iMac because you can't get in there, you can't swap components. If your hard drive dies, you can't switch that yourself. You have to send it to Apple, and I don't want to have to do that. I want to be able to have a spare hard drive from Newegg and be able to throw it in there whenever I want. Uh, number one. Number two, I didn't want an OEM PC. I didn't want to go to Best Buy or anything and just buy a computer because I don't know what's in there. I don't know how upgradable it is. Things like that. I just don't trust all the trial software and crap they always pre-install. So not wanting to get an iMac or an OEM PC and you know for the stuff I do, like I do uh, 1080p video editing for YouTube, I play some games, I need to have a reliable computer for my schoolwork. So that I started thinking oh, maybe I should get a Mac Pro. Uh, it might be sort of overkill for me but it'll last me a long time. I won't really have to buy a new computer for many years to come. But the problem with the Mac Pro is that it's $2,500 for the baseline. That's only about 3 gigs of RAM, something like that. And I'm not saying that it's not worth it because the Mac Pro is a beautiful system inside and out. But the fact is, like I said, I'm a college kid, I'm broke, and there's no way I can shell out $2,500 for a computer, I and mean, that's just not realistic. So since any OEM PC was out, an iMac was out, a Mac Pro was out, really all that's left is, you know, the MacBook. And like I said, that has no expandability, or upgradability rather, at all. So I didn't want to go that route. So then I started looking at the Hackintosh, because it has a lower price. You can run OS 10 with great performance and great parts as long as you do it right. And that's what this whole video series is going to be about, doing it right from start to finish. So the second reason that I got into the Hackintosh world is because 
I'm a nerd. I'm going to school for management information systems. I'm going to be basically an IT guy. I love tinkering with computers. I love getting in there in the computer, updating it, upgrading all my parts. Uh, if something goes wrong, I actually kind of enjoy trying to fix it, figuring out what exactly is wrong, trying to make this work. I like it. I like to experiment, basically, is what I'm saying. If you don't like to experiment, if you don't want to upgrade your components, if you don't want to hassle with dual booting and bootloaders and everything, don't do this because, like I said earlier, you'll be very disappointed with the results. And I'm not saying that OS X won't run great, because it will run great, but it's the steps to get it to work great that you will not enjoy. So since October of last year, my primary uses for this have been YouTube. Every video on my channel you've seen since um, since I met, started mentioning Hackintoshes on my channel, since about October, November of last year, every video has come through this machine, uh, whether it be on Final Cut, ScreenFlow, or just my Logitech webcam software. Uh, I've made many changes since then, but uh, this thing handles every video I throw at it perfectly. Final Cut Pro 10 runs amazing on this. I get videos cranked out faster than I ever thought I would. So the performance on the system is very good, and it fits my needs perfectly. But not only for video editing, even for school. Uh, if you saw my videos from two months, three months ago, I was in my college dorm. Uh, I had my computer with me. Didn't skip a beat. It's a very reliable system, even just for schoolwork. Uh, Office, uh, Word, and everything, it, it loads up ridiculously fast. Just back up your data, and this is a very reliable system. So now to turn this sort of on you guys, here's a, just uh, about three or so questions to ask yourself before you go any further into this video series. Number one, are you capable of building a PC from scratch components? Are you able to go on Newegg, purchase a motherboard, purchase RAM, purchase a power supply, purchase a processor, everything and throw it all together in a case to look nice and have it function correctly. If you're not willing to do that or you're not capable of doing that and you don't really want to learn, if you think it's a hassle, then don't do a Hackintosh because any pretty much OEM PC, if you try to install Mac OS X on it, more than likely the motherboard won't be fully supported or the processor won't be supported or something will go wrong, maybe your network card. Uh, but So when you buy uh, all the parts off Newegg or Amazon or anything, uh, you can actually look at the specs of that motherboard and make sure everything will work great. So you can do your research on these parts, but these uh, aftermarket PCs, they're already put together for you. That Everything is just the way it is. You can't really change anything, and if you do change anything, you might as well just buy a new computer anyway. So I would not recommend installing this on any OEM PC. If you want to build a Hackintosh, don't take your dad's old computer. Don't take your computer from three years ago. Build a new one. So number two, are you willing to tinker around with the hardware and the software? Uh, with the software, you know, it's not as simple as putting in a DVD of Lion that you made, that you have to know how to make, that uh, you put in your computer and reboot and it's done. It's not that simple. You have to install bootloaders, you have to install drivers, and it can be a very lengthy process, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So you have to be willing to learn and to tinker with not only software, but the hardware as well. You have to be able to get in your computer. If your graphics card goes wrong, you have to know how to replace a graphics card. You have to know what every different slot is, you know, PCI, RAM slots. You have to know a lot of stuff that goes on inside this computer. And the last question is, are you willing to take the time and research everything? Every control on the motherboard, your your sound controller, your uh, SATA controller, everything that goes on on your motherboard, you have to make sure it works with OS X. Um, I remember my old PC, it was an eMachines PC, I had my first computer ever. I could install OS X on it, but things like USB wouldn't work because the controller wasn't supported in OS X. Things like that you really have to pay attention to. So you have to be willing to research everything from every single component inside this computer. Uh, you have to make sure that you want OS X, you have to research what OS X is all about, how it differs from Windows. You have to be willing to do your research. Don't expect to just go online, buy one of each part and throw it in a case and have it work because more than likely it won't work. So now real quick, I'm just going to list some pros and cons. Uh, the first pro I have is great performance at a fraction of the cost. You guys have seen my videos, my stress tests where everything just boots up pretty much instantly. You can just highlight every app in your folder, uh, right click open and Everything is just like there within seconds. It, it's a very fast system. I could be doing a screen capture, editing in Final Cut, using compressor, all at the same time, and my system doesn't skip a beat. And this system right here cost me about fifteen hundred dollars. So, and that's about a thousand dollars less than the baseline Mac Pro with more memory and a faster processor. But um, getting into the cons a little bit, it's not Apple quality, but I'll talk about that in just a second. But that's the first uh, pro I have is that it's great performance for a fraction of the cost. The next pro I have is there's a bunch to be learned in the process. Uh, like I said, I'm going to school to be an IT guy, and just in this process alone and the things I've learned online, I've already learned ridiculous amounts. Um, before this process, I barely knew what a bootloader was. I didn't know what EFI was. I didn't know what a DSDT was. 
any of that stuff. But now I know what it is, and I can pretty much use them on a daily basis. So if you're interested in learning more about computers or anything, this is a great way to learn. The next pro I have is that it works almost too good to be true. I can run any Apple uh, application on here. I have the Mac App Store. I can just simply uh, download it as something with one click right from the Mac App Store, have it work. Everything really does work just perfectly like a Mac Pro. I can use Time Machine to back up my data. Every built-in application from OS X I can use with this hardware. Even the delayed startup and shutdown, uh, there's a preference in here where you can have your computer turn on and off at certain times of the day. Even things like that that you would never think would work, they work perfectly with this motherboard. Uh, the motherboard keeps track of time. When it hits a time, it boots up OS X. Don't ask me how it works because I don't know, but it does work. So what I'm trying to say is you can get some great performance from this system. Like, like I said, it works almost too good to be true. Next one I have is with the right hardware, the system is very stable. Like I said, uh, I've been running Lion for months and I've maybe gotten one kernel panic that I can remember and that was my fault because I was messing with the overclocking settings and stuff but uh, Lion itself runs very good on this hardware so pick the right hardware and you'll have a very stable and reliable system. The next pro is that your hardware can be upgraded as you want it. Uh, if a year from now I decide I want a 6 core processor and I have the cash, I could take that out and throw it in. With a Mac Pro, I think you're just stuck with the processor it comes with. Like Obviously you can remove it, but you can't go with anything else but that Xeon, I believe. I'm not positive, don't quote me on that. But um, also, like say with memory. The Mac Pro has very specific memory. It has those huge heat sinks on it. It's very uh, specific memory. But with this system, I could throw any 240 pin uh, memory module in there and have it work just fine. And the last pro I have is the vast variety of hardware. So for example, the Core i7, there's many different types of Core i7. There's quad core, there's six core, there's Sandy Bridge, you know, and those are sort of motherboard specific from uh, first gen to second gen. But not only just processors with graphics cards, there's many, many different graphics cards out there that you can update to. That would work just fine. Like I said before with memory, power supplies, you know, there's many different varieties of every component that you can upgrade to that will work. So now moving on to the cons portion. First con I have is that it's not Apple quality. If you look inside my case, there's a bunch of wires everywhere. Uh, there's some parts that just look kind of sketchy, uh, like the fan wires are running out the case and stuff like that. If you don't want to see wires, then get a Mac. Uh, even the case I have now, it's a black case, it's a mesh sort of look to it. I really like this case, but it's not an aluminum Mac Pro case either. It doesn't have handles on it, it doesn't have just that aluminum professional look to it. If you're someone that wants something like that, uh, I would just get a Mac Pro because it's the most beautiful machine on the market. Yes, you can get a Mac Pro case for this, but you do have to modify the case, which if you're not good at working with metal, don't even attempt. Second thing is, sometimes things can go wrong at the worst possible time. Uh, personally, I haven't really had this happen since I've been online, but I remember with Snow Leopard, I was just working on my schoolwork, and I randomly got a kernel panic, and I tried to reboot, and my system was really slow and really sluggish. I, to this day, I still don't know what happened. It's like my OS just sort of randomly died on me, and I had to restore. Now, luckily, I had everything backed up, which I can't stress enough, and I'll stress throughout this entire series is to back up your data. And while it doesn't happen often, and every computer does have problems, Mac, PC, Linux, anything, they all have problems, but with a Hackintosh especially, things can go wrong at the worst possible time. The third con I have, which might not be a con for everybody, but you will be lost completely if you don't have somewhat decent computer skills, once again, Napoleon Dynamite. You have to know how to install a bootloader, how to create a bootable USB drive, how to install OS X. You just have to know many different things, like in the BIOS you have to change some settings, things like that. If, if what I said to you is, might as well be a different language, then, and you really want to do this, then you, you have some brushing up to do. The next one is that updates can be problematic. They're usually not too bad, but usually with my specific motherboard, every time, say for example I'm on 10.7.2, once 10.7.3 comes out, more likely than not, I will lose audio. For whatever reason, Apple just updated their um, their audio driver, and so it replaces mine every time, so I lose audio. With some motherboards, it's not an issue. Some motherboards use that audio controller. However, mine doesn't. So I just have to, it's as simple as opening up MultiBeats, which is a post-installation utility. You guys will, uh, I'll talk about that later in my other videos. But it's as simple as reinstalling a Kext, which is a driver. It's not hard to do, but it can be a pain. And the last con I have is that there's no warranty. Um, maybe some of your parts you purchased a warranty, maybe for a year or two. But if I didn't purchase anything or any sort of warranty on my memory, and one of my six sticks gives out, 
uh, I'm out of luck. I might have two gigs of memory. And since this is a DDR3 system, that's an odd number of memory sticks, so my performance will also go downhill. So it's my responsibility to buy a new memory module. So things like that. The whole computer itself has no warranty of any kind. Some of my individual components do but not everything. So if something dies, it's all on you to fix it. You can't say, hey, this messed up on me. I want my computer back in a week. And they'll fix it up for you and ship it back. It, no, that just doesn't happen. So that's pretty much it for the pros and cons. Um, in my opinion, the pros definitely outweigh the cons. So I do recommend doing this if you have you know, the stuff I've talked about, those three questions I asked you guys, like the willingness to build a computer, stuff like that. If you understand the pros and cons and you still want to do this, the next step is actually buying your hardware. And I'll get more into that in the next video. But where do you buy your hardware just so you can start looking around? Uh, Newegg.com, TigerDirect.com, and Amazon.com are the three main places I recommend buying your hardware from. So I wouldn't really recommend any third-party sites uh, that aren't that popular. I'm uh, not saying that they're bad, but I'm just saying that if it's on Newegg, buy it from Newegg instead. So to wrap up this portion of my series, I want to say that this system is very stable. Even though sometimes like in the pros or cons or anything else that I've mentioned, I say the system isn't stable. Things can go wrong at the wrong time. But really that's not the case very often and most times that it does mess up, it's my fault because you know I'm messing with overclocking settings, I'm trying a different driver to see if I can get things to work as good as they possibly can. So most of the time it messes up, it is my fault. If you just, like I said at the beginning of this video, if you have a specific purpose for this computer, say you want it only for audio editing with Logic or only video editing with yeah. Final Cut Pro, it will work great for you. Uh, if you want to use a computer to do a specific thing, as long as you don't go around experimenting with it and updating it, nothing will go wrong. In answer to the question that I, I posed at the beginning of this, is it a viable solution? Is it just a fun experiment? I don't believe it's just a fun experiment because I've been using mine, like I said, for well over a year and it's been working great. I do use mine for specific purposes and although I do tinker with it, I back up my data so if something does go wrong, it's as simple as restoring from a time machine backup and I'm right back on my feet exactly where I left off like it never happened. So overall, yes, I would say this is a viable solution to anything you really want to do with it. As long as you don't get in there too much or just experiment too much with it. If you just get OS X installed, all your applications installed and it works great, and you simply leave it alone and let it run, don't fix what isn't broken, then it is a very stable system for you. So that's all I have for the first part, is it worth it? The next part of my series will be picking out the hardware. I'll go over um, pretty much everything you guys will ever need to know about picking hardware for a Hackintosh. But until then, I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. I hope you guys enjoy this first part of the series. Uh, look forward to about six more or so, uh, unless I decide to add more or subtract, you know. I'm, I'm sort of just playing this by ear, but I have like a little, you know, Bible down here of Hackintosh stuff that I wrote. So, like I said, check me out on Twitter. Uh, comment below on how you like this sort of series, uh, things that you would recommend. And let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.